Kevin from New York. Kevin from New York, you are live on Truth Wanted. What is going on? Hey, how's it going, you guys? How are you? Going good, going good. Having a good night so far. Um, I see that you are a theist and you want to discuss why you believe in God. Yes. Um, well, first of all, um, one of my main reasons uh, is because of the Bible. Um, and having to do with the Bible, I, I sense that there is a cleverness within the Bible that is completely unique, not found in other books um, uh, in, in the world, actually. But before I continue, um, I, I think it would be uh, safe to assume that I th believe that this cleverness that is found within the Bible his origin is coming from uh, the Trinity, which is the Holy Spirit. But um, I wanted to ask you guys, what do you think that the Holy Spirit is? I, I think it's a made up idea. Uh, I don't think it's real. I don't think it's real in a physical sense or a metaphysical sense or a paraphysical sense or really any sense. I think it's real in the sense that it's a social construct that has guided humanity to perform certain actions over others. Um, but I don't think there's any spirits out there, um, you know, possessing people or otherwise, or, or informing people's opinions. I, I do think it is strictly sort of just an idea. Uh, do you, do you share the same opinion? Dally and Heathen? Yeah, for the most part, I also think it might be, uh, I think, I think it might have a part to do with the, the chemical processes that happen in the brain. Um, when a lot of people get together, same sort of thing that happens when people are at concerts and things like that. And you get that feeling of euphoria. And I think it's just misinterpreted as a, a, a being yeah. that I don't believe exists. Yeah. Especially Holy Spirit, in like the Pentecostal sense, right? When you're, exactly. when you're speaking in tongues and stuff like that, right? That's another idea of the Holy Spirit. But I think, uh, as I mentioned, the Holy Spirit takes on multiple different ideas, but that's all they really are. They're just ideas. Uh, I don't think they exist in reality. So there you go, Kevin. Mm, uh, that's interesting. Um, you know, wherever you look, you don't get a definite answer on what the Holy Spirit is exactly. However, I believe that I've found the answer. Uh, uh, to be more specific, um, if you were to read a text titled uh, The Martyrdom and Ascension of Isaiah the Prophet, he has an account on which he says that he witnesses what the Holy Spirit actually is. And, and before I even continue, um, the things having to do with God, uh, I found out specifically um, goes against what we understand as logic, period. Uh, for example, um, when Isaiah the prophet seen the Holy Spirit uh, to the left hand of God, um, he described it as a, a single angel, but he goes on to explain that the angel of the Holy Spirit is not only personified within one form, but is also everyone who God would speak through. And that's what I mean by how everything that has to do with God goes against logic. Um, it, it goes a lot further than that. I get you. The, the ascension of itself. Isaiah uh is a is a pseudo pigraphal text right uh so like do you do you believe it's actually written by isaiah or people who knew isaiah Oop, hello you're it's still pig, there kevin? kevin but i i believe yeah i'm still here um gotcha. the you you could say that it was a pseudo pigraphal text but um, that was incorrectly uh, labeled by the early church fathers. They removed that text out of the Bible for uh, no good reason at all. Okay. You know what I mean? So let's get their own let, theological framework. Sure. Let's let's um, say that you're right. Let's say that this is actually an account written by the biblical Isaiah. Okay. Why should I believe Isaiah's account of the Holy Spirit over every single other person's? you know, account in history of the Holy Spirit. 
uh, why you should believe it is it, because yeah. um, it, it begins with what I started off saying that there is a, a cleverness to it. Um, it. It explains a lot of why things are said the way that it's said in the Bible. For example, um, uh, even the Apostle Peter says that, uh, knowing this first, that prophecy never had its origin in the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Um, okay. And to give That's you an example of this cleverness, Yes, uh, yeah. and, and to, to give you an example of this cleverness that um, I'm talking about, it may sound controversial to even my fellow Christians, but I found that even uh, some New Testament verses and texts can be combined to make more sense. Um, okay. So that's interesting. That's uh, interesting. That's an interesting take, Kevin. But but think about this, right? I just started reading Terry Pratchett's The Color of Magic. Because I've heard so many people talk about the Discworld series, um, and so I'm, I'm kind of getting into that. Um, I find an immense cleverness in that book. Uh, he talks about how, you know, the, the world is kind of held up by a turtle, and then there's elephants on top of the turtle, and then the world is on top of that. And there's this theory in the book that says, well, you know, the turtle is floating through the universe, and it's going to mate with all the other turtles. Uh, and that theory is called the Big Bang Theory. Right. So it's like it's just this these little jokes where it's like, ah, oh, there's an immense like cleverness there. But does cleverness have any indication of truth? In other words, can something be clever in explaining something, but also not be true? Mm, it, it depends on uh, what we're talking about here. Uh, sure. Even the example that you gave. Um, I don't, that's not the type of cleverness that I even mean. Um, I think, I think your, your, your idea of cleverness is that there are explanations in which the Bible is written the way it is. In other words, it kind of provides a framework, right? Is that kind of what you were getting at with your idea of cleverness? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, sure. because um, if, okay. if well, I... Well, on that note, the, just, it, just so I can continue my point here, Kevin, just real quick, on that note, right? I can also maybe provide yeah. another framework by which the Bible was written. In fact, I, I'll give you one right now. I think the Bible was written by several different people across several different generations, each having their own interpretation of what God is. Uh, in the later in the New Testament, their interpretation of what the Holy Spirit is and what Jesus is. And combined, we see these weird differences because they all had different ideas and, and they were all kind of put together in one book even though the authors never met each other, never had, con well, some of them met each other, but didn't all have contact with each other. And because of their time and place and culture had different ideas. So like, you know, that is one interpretation. And I, I would say that's pretty clever. I would say that there is a cleverness to that and that it can wrap up a lot of loose ends, but like even just being clever in itself doesn't make it true, right? There has to be other things that make something true. Just because something can ex possibly explain something doesn't make it true, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. You know, yeah. So if I can just butt in for a, a quick second here, Kevin. Um, yeah. I don't know if you are, but I'm, I'm a big comic book guy, right? So uh, if you're if you're big into comic books at all for a while, you know that for a long time there uh, in D.C., they had all these stories that didn't really make sense and didn't go co cohese together very well. And then in like the 80s, they had this thing called Crisis on Infinite Earths that sort of explained all these different things and why they didn't make sense and why they all existed in the same universe. Does that make all of D.C. true? Because they were finally able to, to, to find a way to iron that out and make all these seemingly incohesive storylines make sense? Well, uh, no, I, I'm I'm well aware that exactly uh, Exa the, the the very um, the the very idea of God and the the denominations out there. If you talk to each individual person, each individual person would have a different version of what they believe is true and what's not true. However, I believe that it was never meant to be that way in, in the very. And, and, and likewise, it was uh, Christianity was never meant to be forced on anybody uh, okay. in that same fashion. But 
that there's still that underlining uh, capital T truth that that we can all uh, grasp onto if we're being logical. Um, yeah, and I, I I think that we can both kind of come to that together, right? And and I'm interested in that too. I want to know capital T truth if it exists. Um, and so here's the thing: you're presenting to me mm -hmm. this idea, this idea that look, the ascension of Isaiah actually provides a great framework in which to view the rest of the Christian bibliography, right? Uh, to to look at the other texts and see how it can all come together. And you know what, Kevin? I I haven't I haven't even read the ascension of isaiah personally but i'll take your word for it i'll take your word for it that it explains a lot of things but again i still want to know does that make it true because that that's kind of the crux of it right like valley and heathen gave a, a great point here there's lots of fan theories about how the marvel universe works and lots of little quirks but like not that doesn't make any of it true or even follow the author's intentions of, of what they mean to be true so like how do we get the truth from this text how does the text demonstrate its truthiness i get its cleverness but cleverness doesn't always mean truthiness right so where do we get the truthiness from well uh, the the truth comes from um the the time frame in which it happened um there there is a timeline in which uh in which during isaiah's lifetime there was uh, a record of who was King of Jerusalem at the time, and and the very moment that this person became king, it led to a great apostasy uh, throughout Jerusalem. Um, that that's only a very small part of it, actually. But as as I was saying before, though, the whole thing about knowing whether or not. Uh, because you, you already know the claim that the disciples, most of the authors of the Bible, claimed that they were led by the Holy Spirit. Um, if you, uh, if it's all right, if I give this example, it comes from Second Peter, Second Peter two eleven and Jude nine. Okay, Second uh, Peter two eleven says. Uh, but even angels who are greater in power and might, uh, they do not bring slanderous accusations against such beings in the presence of the Lord. Okay, I'm sorry to interrupt you, Kevin, but, but even, I'm not really seeing if this is answering my question. Because my question is, how do we know the truth? Now, you mentioned an interesting example, I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong. You said the ascension of Isaiah talks about the lineage of 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 kings and describes like a true fact about reality in that sense. Was that what you were saying? Uh, in a sense, yes. It, yeah. It's because it, it all falls into line for me. Do okay. you know what I'm trying to say? I see what you're saying. It, look, it look. And, 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 well, here's, here's the thing, Kevin, right? Going back to this, I know it's yes. it can be a clunky analogy sometimes, but but going back to this Marvel analogy, I believe there's some canon where, like, you know, 9-11 happened within the Marvel universe, right? I, I, I don't know. It could, maybe it doesn't work in Marvel. But there should, you can imagine there could be a canon of comic books that accurately describe the events of 9-11 and then still have a fictional story based around that or, or even unrelated to that, right? Like, that's still a possibility, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, right. Yeah, I'm, I'm well aware of that, but you see, even even with that analogy, that's as far as it, it will ever go. It's just that analogy and how okay. fictional will interject um, nonfiction into their uh, material. Sure. So how do we know the other parts of the Ascension of Isaiah aren't fiction? Um, well, th that's just it. Uh, that that just works off of what I've been saying all along, uh, that the things of God actually works contrary to what we believe is uh, logic. You know what I mean? Because as, oh. as I listen to uh, these, these atheist shows and people uh, bring up different topics, such as the soul and all of that, yeah. the, the soul itself 
um, is made in such a way to, to where it doesn't conform to any particular aspect. Okay, so you're saying you're saying like ideas like the soul and, and Chris, you know, feel free to interject at any point, but you're saying ideas of the soul, maybe ideas of God actually defy logic. They aren't even explainable by logic. Yes, and, but but I mean, even moving okay. more closer to what we can we can see in reality. I mean, the universe itself tells me that. I mean, like like for example, um, I I know I'm jumping around a lot, but but like like I was just saying, um, we need to rethink even our theories about uh, the creation of the universe, which is the Big Bang. Um, the the James Webb Telescope. It's telling us that we we are very much could be very wrong about the Big Bang theory because they're finding galaxies in the farthest reaches of what we can see, and and that shouldn't be possible sure. because it sure. takes millions of years to form these galaxies that they're detecting in the furthest reaches of space. Sure, and there are proposals right. well, that possibly I, solve models of Big Bang cosmology that involve dark energy and dark matter, you know, and other such things. And you might have skepticism towards those ideas, right? Um, but real quickly, and we do have to kind of wrap up this call in a bit here, Kevin, just 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 for time's sake, move on. Nothing nothing against you, because that I do find this to be a fascinating conversation. Um, but but let's think about this, right? If God, Holy Spirit angels whatever if these concepts actually defy logic if they can't even be assessed by logic then having a belief in them does it even make sense to say that it can be logical because like i think there are at least elements that the bible talks about and aspects of god jesus whatever that could be looked at in some logical capacity like if i got healed and like I could see, I don't have to wear glasses. There's a before and after there you could look at, right? There are some parts you can examine. So like if 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 everything is illogical, does it even make sense to look at arguments for God or arguments for these things in a logical way? Well, well yeah, uh, absolutely. Um, I, I'm probably one of the few Christians who say that would we'll look at uh, you and maybe other atheists that I may encounter and say, uh, you know, you don't have to believe, you know what I mean? But shoot, I mean, logically speaking, not even God will force you to believe. Okay. Um, well, so I just, so I real don't... quick, I wanted to address... I wanted to address a couple things because you, you've been bouncing all over the place there, Kevin. Um, but one thing, a couple things that you said earlier kind of really stuck out to me that haven't been addressed really. And one of them was when, when you're asked, you know, how do you know these things are true? You said because of the age. So does, does that mean old things mean that they're true? So in 2000 years from now, when all these comic books are 2000 years old, is that going to make them even more true then than they are now? Because that really seems to be the only thing that, that that's different between the things going on in the Bible. Because from what I'm seeing, it looks like a lot of people were reading things that had been written and then writing more and solving some problems that they saw in the original text. And that seems to be what goes on throughout most of the Bible. They rely on previous texts to correct things and add to it, just like comic book writers do. Kevin, you still there? Uh, we might have lost Kevin here. That's too bad. Well, Kevin, I think um, we're going to go ahead and have to let him go anyway, because we're about at the end time for that call. 